so as promised guys here's a little walk around on yesterday's purchase it's gonna have to be a bit of a wet walk around weather's really bad so i drove this um mazda 2 1.5 automatic ts2 all the way back from um western supermare yesterday it's 2012 and i drove it home and back as well last night drives really really well hasn't missed a beat so i got this from a subscriber whose name is craig who runs a mobility shop in western supermare i was having a chat with him yesterday he um emailed me because he took this in part exchange against a doblo with a rear ramp on it and said did i want it offered it to me um allows him to cash out a deal a nice bit of stock for me yeah having a chat with craig yesterday he set up his own mobility company when i think he said in early 20s beginning of his 20s was just 500 pounds now he's got a really good mobility shop stock to the gunnels and he set it up because i think he said he was his father was disabled and obviously he assisted him quite a lot and that experience in his teens allowed him to set up his own mobility business i love hearing about stories like that, about how people build businesses up from scratch i find them really quite inspiring i know when my favorite thing with my corporate job was when i went out to the engineering firms where someone had set the business up from scratch or bought it when it was run down and had expanded it and built it up i used to love those stories when you go to those businesses where you're talking to the business owner it's really hard not to become very enthused about and uh, infused about doing stuff and being inspired to get out there and just do stuff so yeah credit to him he deserves to do well craig with his business i will check with him if he wants me to mention the business name um obviously with stuff like this and there can sometimes be reasons you might not want to if he says cool we'll give him a little plug in the next video um so yeah massive thanks to him for getting in touch so yeah so this was part of exchange against a doblo with the ramp in the back from the customer it was no longer needed i haven't done an auto yet on the channel well i have done those of you that watched all my videos would have seen a fiesta back a long while ago i did i really struggled to sell so i was hesitant about doing some more but people keep asking me for autos so i thought i'd get this one in so do a quick walk around on it bodywork condition really good guys really good the alloys are in good nick so i don't have to do anything really on the alloys the bodywork is the nice metallic purple that these come in that alloy's in good nick as well it's obviously a bit dirty for me driving it. i haven't had a chance to wash it yet today no dents or scratches for me to deal with i'm not going to have to get the rattle cans out for this one it's going to be just a clean it up job and i think it's going to come up pretty mint so yeah nice spec ts2 so you've got the alloy wheels i think it's color coded really nice looking car inside um, it's really clean as well seats are not marked up you've got genuine mats that are all in good condition it's not going to need much cleaning up at all in here it's really to be honest most of the dirt in here is from me driving it yesterday we've got lecky windows have we got electric windows in the back i don't know if they're wind up or electric they're wind up in the back we've got front electric windows and mirrors oh we've got steering wheel controls for the stereo air conditioning cd radio got the auxiliary which i always need when i'm traveling so plug my phone in put my tunes on and all this is in really good nick because it's only done 53,000 miles all the steering wheels in good nick gear levers in good nick it's in really good condition it's only going to need a very minor clean it's had three owners as i recall it's got a it the mot i think runs out august next year might be early now i want to put a new mot on it anyway because it had some it did have a note on the last mot for corrosion on the front around the front frame same front subframe so you're seeing that those of you watch my channel regularly you're seeing all of these cars you deal with this sort of age group 2010s they're all having corrosion on you know on subframes front or rear and most of the time it's just surface so i'm going to get under there wire brush it all down clean it all up before i put it into fill for the mot down at moore's so we can get that off the mot advisory and know that it's treated properly so we'll get on and do that in terms of service history um mazdas do it all online so i need to get the my mazda app i'll show you that in a minute and pull up the service history on that but i have got some receipts that's obviously only in network stuff but i've got receipts from the uh, other work the customers had so obviously there's no, no not a service book with the mazdas it's all online so once they start going out of network you just have to keep the receipts but i've got services here for the la for the last three years and the most recent one was about 350 quid where they did all the fluids 
so it's got a good amount of service history on it as well it's been well looked after on that front as i said it drove without fault at all it um yeah it was a really nice drive i haven't looked in the engine bay let's look together so i normally do the one point i think it's 1.25s normally in these i haven't done a 1.5 before this one gets up and goes i tell you that oh it's clean under here yeah i haven't done one of these 1.5s before but it's certainly a clean engine bay it's an honest it's not been overly cleaned there's no plastic cleaners or anything on that so it's just genuinely clean i did check the oil before i set off yesterday and it is brand new which ties in with the service history it's absolutely brand new oil on this so that service history is genuine coolant levels where it should be it's bang on which ties in with the service history as well. so this is a 1.5 as i keep saying um and I'm assuming this is chain, yeah, chain driven. So chain driven 1.5. I know the 1.25s go really, really well, but this goes really well. It's actually quite nippy. And this is, I haven't had this before, transmission fluid. Well, oh, that's a nice color. That's super clean as well. I think that was done on the last invoice. I'll double check. But yeah, it's been really well looked after. It's another example of uh, subscribers cars, which always as a general rule tend to be better. So we've got low mileage, we've got well looked after, let's say we'll get on the Mazda app and see what other services we've got, but we know it's had it for the last three years. Condition's really, really good. So this should be one that, to be honest, today I need to get a bucket over it and start photographing it, don't I? Because I should put it straight up for sale and then get it in for the MOT. I won't need to service it. I think the last service was done well within the last year, if I remember rightly. So I don't need to service it. So this is all going to come down to how much the MOT cost at the end of the day. Tires wise, got a new tire there. New tire there, pretty much, not, not new new, but fairly new. Yeah, loads and loads of tread. I'm not going to need rubber. So this is all going to come down to whether there's any suspension components need changing out or anything like that. So hopefully I get off lightly on the MOT. Where it is price wise, I don't know. The last time I went by the book on an auto trader for an automatic, I got nowhere near it. So I'm gonna have to wait for the numbers to come in and then see how we get on. Uh, people keep telling me that small automatics are really in demand at the moment, but the requests I get are normally for ones around 2,000 pounds. I think this is more like a 5,000 pound car. Because you bear in mind, if this was a 2012 normal Mazda 2 manual, with this mileage it'd probably be a 4k car anyway so this is going to be a 5k car easy if not a bit more but we'll have to see where we get to with that but many thanks to craig again for getting in touch and for offering me the vehicle and for giving me a nice smooth easy transaction all the best with your business you deserve it and like i said i'll check with him if he wants me to give a plug for the store and we'll put it on the next video if, if it needs be i have now stone chipped that rear axle after having um put the fat can on it or whatever it's called someone asked me what do i mean by stone chip just literally a can of stone chip paint and just cover everything up with it so it, it looks pleasant so that's all been done all the way around coated the springs with it after they had the treat, treatment excuse me and the rear axle all been treated now i checked the numbers on this i sold this to the lady for I think it was three thousand pounds might be three thousand one hundred i just checked the recommended private sale price for this is three thousand pounds so i know she spent a bit of money getting it for the mot i don't know what she actually spent on the mot but she isn't losing out much at all to be honest so i've recommended to her if she wants to sell it privately to 995 which i'm happy to do on her behalf as long as she takes payment directly from the person i do charge for that service I was a lightweight before and didn't charge for it. Then I started to charge a little bit for it. And then I realized how much work it is because I've got to pay for auto trader, motors, and a car guru. So I've got costs there straight away. I then got to deal with the cleaning and keeping the clean vehicle clean, which takes up quite a bit of time. I have to deal with the inquiries and with the test drives. So, you know, I can easily be in a day or two into the car. So and to be honest i've started charging 300 pounds for that now including VAT. so i actually net less than that obviously or 250 or whatever it is so about 250 to do it obviously they want to take away and sell it themselves they can but if they want to use my account i mean they're going to spend 50 quid advertising on or to trade themselves so if i am going to sell cars on behalf of people now i'm going to uh, charge that money for it because it does end up taking a lot of my time and don't forget 
well, I'm sure you haven't got. I did all this for free for her anyway, just so that when you know, just put her mind at rest. And when people come to view it and they saw that on the last MOT, I can show them what's been done. It said that the front discs were pitted and scored, didn't it? Well, I drove it up here and they're not. It was just from sitting, they're absolutely fine. There's a little bit of a lip on them, but they certainly don't need changing threat now for safety wise. It said that the, the, there was some cracking and perishing on the tyres, which I can see a bit there. But again, it's from the car sitting, they've got loads of tread on them. And they're not an MOT failure because they're not considered unsafe. Would I change them myself before I retail the car? Probably. If it was my own car, would I change them? Probably not, to be honest. I'd drive on them. But you could stick a couple of tires on it cheaply enough if you wanted to. And then there was the back box was corroded. Well, we know that's the outer skin. I said to her, look, you can do it for cosmetic reasons if you want to. The actual exhaust system itself is okay. So if you want to change it for cosmetic reasons, you can, or you can leave it as a negotiation point on the car. It is very dirty. If she does want me to sell it, I'm going to be spending quite a lot of time cleaning this. Those seats need another another wet clean. But I've sent her an email. I want it all in writing so that we know exactly where we are. And I'll let her come back to me. But in between, I'll get the wheels on and get it out of the way so I can get something else in. So... This is the My Mazda app. You can get onto the Play Store and download it. If you're ever flipping a Mazda and you want to find out more about its service history, I don't know from what year they started doing it, but you can get onto the My Mazda app. As long as you've got the VIN number for it. I put in the uh, Mazda 2. We can go to maintenance schedule. Uh, tells you next service, all that kind of information. Now that indicates that, uh, let's go to service history. Ah, all we've got is a PDI report. Oh, blooming Arnold Clark. I hate Arnold Clark. They never give you service history on cars. Never give you service history on cars. So it's been serviced out of network, which is why it's not on the uh, Mazda app. Bummer. Bummer. So I can only sell it as part service history. I think I've got about four or five services. So it's going to have to be part service history sold as, unfortunately. But judging by the condition of the car, I've no doubt it was looked after. But, you know... I won't get anything out of Arnold Clark, they just use data protection to stop me from giving any information out. But yeah, in other circumstances, that's been a very useful, very useful app for me to have um, when I get Mazdas in. I think, uh, I think I showed it to you guys before when I got that Mazda MX-5 in with no history and then boff, I had like a full service history on the My Mazda app. So yeah, if you get Mazda in, use that. I got delivery from Moonshine, I think it is. More quick detail. I've been waiting on this stuff for so long. They've been out of stock for ages. This is by far and away, you, you guys know my, my feelings on this, by far and away the best quick detailer. They don't pay me to say it. It really is. Because trust me, I've tried them all. I want to clean cars as quickly as I can with as little hassle as possible. A lot of the cars, you obviously get a bit of film and dirt on them and stuff like that. And someone says they want to come and see the car and you want to clean it really, really quickly and you want it to have a good shine. This is the stuff to have. Moonshine Quick Detailer. I can't remember my, my discount code still runs with them. They did give me a discount code for Chops Garage viewers, which is Chops Garage, um, to use in the car at the end. But, you know, either way, this is the stuff to get. It saves me a lot of time, which obviously makes me money, by the fact that I can just so quickly clean the cars over. Uh, if I haven't shown you before, I might do one a little bit later and show you before with it, or I certainly will on another video for those of you who haven't seen it before. But it just goes on, wipes off really cleanly, will take a layer of dirt off, and then when it rains, it beads up really well, and it gives such a good shine without any streaking. And uh, they do supply it in glass bottles, so it's more economically friend, uh, more eco-friendly. Sorry. Yeah, really, really good stuff. Everyone that I've recommended to that's used it says the same thing. They have sent me something else to try this time, Rebellion Wax. It's got the Moonshine Rebellion Wax, so we'll do a little review on that as well. It's a, a little pot, so I'm assuming it's one of those um, very high quality, use sparingly type waxes. I don't wax cars very often. Might be an idea, so I'll try it on the old Acadian and see what shine it puts on there. If we polish a panel, then put this on, see what shine we get out of it, because if it performs as well as their quick detailer, then I'll be definitely be a convert to that as well. Now they have also branched out into a new range of air fresheners called Airly. Um, you remember they did air fresheners under the Moonshine brand before, which were really good. They were the wooden disc ones that you hang up and you get a little pot of oil and you can refresh them all the time. 
So they said, did I want to try one of these? I said, yeah, go on then. And I uh, went for gingerbread because my wife loves gingerbread around Christmas time. She loves the gingerbread smell. So a quick look at that. <laughs> look at what legends. Look, they've done me a chopped garage one. Oh, what legends. They've used a laser, a laser etcher, I imagine, to put it onto that. <laughs> legends. So the way it works is you get the wooden air freshener. And rather than keep throwing away the little paper ones, or whatever you have, you have your oil. And you, uh, oh, spin it around for you. There it is. You have your oil and you put a few drops of oil on, on the wood and then hang it up. And then I forget how long it lasts, but then when you start to lose the smell again, you just put a few more drops of oil on. So again, a bit more eco-friendly than these disposable things. My wife, Blimmin, loves them. She's had one from the Boonshine Goes in her 500X for ages. So, and it does, I can tell you straight away, even opening just the tin, even before I've opened the oil. That smells amazing. That gingerbread one smells amazing. Right, I'd just better message them and see if they've got a discount code for you guys on these as well. But yeah, genuinely love their stuff. I've never been paid to say it. They do send me the occasional thing to try. Um, and I can tell you if it wasn't any good, I'd tell you it wasn't any good. Because I've got no need not to. But uh, yeah, the quick detailer is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Really pleased to have some of that. It's been very frustrating not to be able to get my hands on it. We'll try the wax out, let you know. But yeah, these are little air fresheners. That'd be a good stocking filler for someone, wouldn't it? Yeah, good little stocking f filler, I'd say. Bit, one of these. So yeah, Airly's the new brand. I'll uh, put a link to that website as well in the description. I should be cleaning up those cars and photographing them, but I am very much behind with my receipts and paperwork. This is only a tiny proportion of what I'm behind by. I've done quite a lot this morning, so there isn't going to be a lot of fixing content in today's video, I'm afraid. I haven't also shared numbers with you for a while, so I know some of you are interested in how the numbers work out. One you might be interested in is the Hyundai i20 that we had that rear beam issue with. So we bought it for 3329 It cost me £60 to have it delivered, £150 for the rear axle, service kit £32 odd, warranty £117, MOT at Moore's £178, got the VAT back off that stuff, £60.29. So total was three eight six eight twenty eight uh, and I said I'll get the bat back um, sold it for four nine nine five margin was sixteen hundred and sixty six pounds so I've got to pay two hundred and seventy seven pounds of that on it ouch so my net profit was eighty uh, eight hundred and forty nine pounds oh five then I got the VAT back up here so I get to claim that back so my net with the VAT is £909.34, but then BCA gave me the £200 back for the axle and fitting. So my true net on that one was £1,109.34. So that was worth doing that one. Uh, another Hyundai out the door. I do like my Hyundais and a little bit of hassle, but for that kind of profit, not a bad day. Obviously, profit swings and roundabouts. We can be doing anywhere from 300 quid a car to a really good car, maybe 1500 quid. Average, I'd say, sits anywhere from seven, eight hundred pounds if things are going well. Um, but obviously, that money doesn't stay in the bank all the time either, because you still could have warranty claims afterwards that aren't covered by the warranty. But that one was worth doing. That was a decent profit margin, and it was something you could have done on your driveway, and you probably could have done it on your own as well. I just, uh, well, did I put any labour in for? I should probably put fifty quid in that for for Scott helping me out. But nice car gone outdoor. It was super low miles, wasn't it? Super low. I think it was like 34,000 miles or something on 2012. So good car for the customer. Uh, sold that £500 under Auto Traders Recommended. So the customer got a good deal. They got £500 off Auto Trader Recommended, but I still ended up making 1100 quid, and they've got a really good rear axle on. So they won't have a problem with that going forward. So I'd say that is a win win for everyone in those circumstances. Maybe apart from BCA for having to give me the 200 quid, but. Uh, that was down to a mistake on their part. I realised I didn't cover with you yesterday what bids I'd actually put on at BCA. I covered what I won, but a lot of you like to know what the prices were and what bids I lost as well. I did have a cheeky bid on an Alfa Romeo. It was a Mito 1.4 multi-air with 170 brake horsepower, the clove leaf, so that's the top end one. It was awful looking. Someone put graphics all over it and it had a warning light on it for the suspension and that's a, uh, excuse me, an adjustable suspension. But I checked out what the price of a strut was. Um, I just put a cheeky bid on it of £1,300, but it was withdrawn from sale. There was a Fiat 1.2 uh, lounge on a 2012. 
I only bid £1,100 on it. There must have been a problem with it. I can't remember what the problem with it was. It was withdrawn from sale anyway. Another one withdrawn from sale. 1.2 lounge. 2008. Bid 1500 quid on it. Didn't win that. And then we had a 1.2 Punto on a 2013. I bid 1500 It went 1750 So I wasn't a million miles out. Puntos need to sell cheap. They don't sell for top money. They need to be cheap. 1.2 Corsa. Uh, I bid 1500 It went 1525 So I just missed out on that. Although, probably got a timing chain problem knowing what they're like. Bid on a little Micra, because David Meal, he always says to me, James, Micras, Micras, Micras. So I'd been chatting to him earlier, and I thought I'll have a cheeky bid on a Micra. 2009, I bid 1100 it went for 1450 Don't remember what the miles was on that. Of course, I bid on a high end i30 when I saw it, guys. <laughs> we keep talking about me moving up newer stocks. This is a 2014. I bid 39 on it. It felt went for 5650 I didn't think that was more than a six grand car sale price to be honest but there you go little twingo uh the older style 2011 i bid 600 it went for 1900 pounds <laughs> miles and i can't remember why i only bid 600 probably because i didn't really want it that much and a 1.2 uh clio bid 1100 pound went for 1500 i always assume they're going to need a chain as well so the prices weren't so crazy um yeah, weren't weren't so crazy. One thing I did notice yesterday when I was out and about collecting the Mazda and dropping off the Twingo was where before a forecourts were quite empty with cars, I noticed they're all full again now. So the forecourts I was going by, obviously in the Bridgewater area, there's lots of them, they were actually full of cars. So people, when I last went out a few months ago, there were like big gaps and some of the forecourts were nearly empty. So that might tell us that stock's getting easier to get hold of or that dealers are now accepting they have to pay the higher price point. It could be one of the two things. But if it does mean that stock's easier to get hold of now, then we expect to start to see prices come down. And judging by the price I'm seeing here, that may well be the case. So this is where you have to be a bit careful buying stock. I'm sure some other dealers will come on into the comments and maybe have their own opinion and disagree with me on it. Um, I might be completely wrong, but it might be a time to start beginning a little bit cautious with stock because you don't want to be held with a load of stuff you paid major whack for when the market starts to loosen up and you can get more more cars in easier so um might be something to keep an eye on I, maybe we'll touch base on that again in a month or two's time and see if my prediction was right or not